yourself through some of these end ranges. It's like hitting the save button on your computer when you get done with a document. Um, the more you control the movement and the more you're working into these ranges with your own muscles and your own nervous system, the more likely that stuff is to stick. All right. So that's going back to circling all the way back to the beginning where we talked about flexibility and mobility. There's a huge difference and it's kind of a, you know, maybe a stupid little scientific nerdy pet peeve of mine, but it is really important that flexibility, passive stretching, it's okay. It's not, it's not terrible or, or evil. But if that's all you do and you want to see these big changes in how, how you move, you're probably not going to get there. Um, flexibility is just only a small piece of the puzzle. And then our common problems of lack of mobility, we kind of covered these throughout the, the talk, but um, you know, the, the obvious one is a limited turn. Not being able to get the, the spine turn, the shoulder turn back to the top that you want, obviously that gives a lot of feeling, people a feeling of um, they're not going to be able to get the power and the, the oomph through the swing through the ball that they want. Um, some people, it obviously creates a sense of tension and, and resistance and probably pain. Um, low back pain, right? I'm going to give you a quick idea about what we covered in, in uh, it's an easy way to think of it, is called the tightness sandwich. So I call it the tightness sandwich. If you're tight through your mid-back, through that thoracic spine, through the, through the mid-back and the ribs like we talked about, and you're tight through the hips, those are two key zones of, of movement that we really ideally would have. If those areas are both tight, you have the top bun and the bottom bun being tight, and then your low back sits right in the middle of that. And if you're tight in the mid back and you're tight through the hips and you're trying to generate all this turn and this force and this velocity, your low back will do something. I, I can't sit here and say with certainty what it's going to do, but the force is going to translate through your low back a little bit differently than if your mid back and your hips are moving well. So don't be a tightness sandwich. I would say if you take anything away from the program, if you can get your mid back moving and your hips moving, you've already kind of solved a large piece of the equation that a lot of golfers struggle with. Loss of posture, um, again, very underrated, but golf is a, is a, is a tough sport, hand-eye coordination, a lot of moving parts. Don't make it any tougher than it needs to be by you know, setting up in a posture and then coming way out of it and then trying to get back into that posture by the time you make impact. Uh, it makes it tough. So having mobility in some of these key zones will help you maintain that original golf posture that you set up with and help you rotate and side bend and still kind of stay in those original angles. We talked about sway and slide of the lower body, hips moving too far, lower body moving too far one way away from the target or towards the target. That can really, really affect uh, contact and consistency with the swing and creates another moving part. And then over the top and swing plane limitations. There's a lot of, you know, the male amateur and, and some of the female amateur, you know, it, the body changes over time and that mobility lessens and it's just the, the natural response is the swing plane maybe starts doing things that we wouldn't ideally have it do. So um, a lot of times your swing plane is dictated by what the body can or can't do and mobility restrictions, mobility concerns oftentimes make it very, very uh, challenging for us to get this one.